Thank you for sharing the celebration of Gordon Higginson's life with me. He's probably the finest contemporary evidential spiritualist medium. And in my book, he is the finest. Uh, Gordon Mons Higginson, he was born in November 1918, a Scorpio, and he passed away in January 1993. And he was, he was born and passed away in Longton, um, it's in Staffordshire in the West Midlands. Uh, this is Gordon's portrait in the Arthur Finlay College Library. And it's very fitting because Gordon is synonymous with the Arthur Finlay College. He spent limitless hours lecturing and demonstrating in the library. And he virtually lived there in his own rooms. And so it's my honor to celebrate Gordon's life with you. And I just want to introduce his accounts and predictions and teachings. And he told me these between around about 1980 to 93 when he passed, um, either at his home or on countless residential weeks at the Arthur Finlay College in the UK. Um, I can't do the talk without mentioning Professor Archie Edmiston Roy, um, because I met these two people separately, but around about the same time in 1980. So in summary, it was postgraduate study that took me to Strathclyde University in Glasgow, and I stayed about eight years. And then a lecturing post took me to the West Midlands and then on to Devon, it, which is England. And it was my choice that I returned to Glasgow again and stayed about 17 years until very recently when we've moved back to England again. I don't believe in coincidences, and Glasgow was the home of Archie Roy, and the West Midlands was right next to Staffordshire, um, which is um, where Gordon Higginson lived. Before the postgraduate studies took me to Glasgow for the first time, um, I did my first degree in Arabic and Islamic studies and religious studies at Lancaster University in the UK. And then I went on to live alone for two years in Jordan, Syria, Egypt and Israel as a historian of spirituality. I thoroughly enjoyed exploring these areas and stayed about two years and to sponsor myself I was teaching English and I visited many times since. Um, but I think perhaps my story began when I started visiting a shamanic Bedouin, henna hair Jordanian cave lady who read my future from her blank book and she had lots of plane tickets there in her cave sent to her from America and everywhere of people wanting her to go there and help them with problems and read their futures. Um, but she didn't use any of those tickets. So that was my, um, I think, beginnings of looking into people with psychic or mediumistic abilities. And when I looked at her book, it's just blank pages. So my journey began, and it's a continuing spiritual journey, um, when I met Gordon and Archie around about the 1980s. So that's 42 years ago without giving away my age. So when I joined Archie's renowned long running psychical research night school class at Glasgow University, I then became one of the first members of Archie's Scottish Society of Psychical Research because the SSPR was well attended then. People used to want to come to hear Archie's lectures. I joined the SPR, which is the Society of Psychical Research based in London and the Spiritualist Nationalist Union as a Class B member, which is based at the Arthur Finlay College, the Scientific Medical Network, and threw myself into countless Arthur Finlay College residential weeks with Gordon Higginson. So it was several for a, a year uh, from about 1980 to 93. I have been since, but they were the ones particularly with Gordon. Most days I attended spiritualist churches because in Glasgow, there's virtually every night there's a different church on. And weekly, I would go to sittings at an SNU church with good quality mediumship and have one-to-one -one sittings with mediums. And I received Leslie Flint um, tapes um, and Ivor James and many other direct voice trans mediumship tapes. So I was really threw myself into it from about 1980. Um, after about nine years in Glasgow, I moved to the West Midlands to uh, lecture in English and be a student counsellor at Solihull College. But I taught psychical research in the evenings at Warwick University and Stoke Park College. 
And then on to Devon, um, I used my 20 years by that point from 1980 to 2001, accumulated research to write two 100,000 uh, word MPhil and PhD dissertations on shamanic out of body near death experiences and mediumship. It was a private university and I'd spent a year writing to universities around the UK and really had got nowhere um, because um, the sociology department in Exeter wanted me to study the people, not the phenomena. Um, and it's somebody in Oxford uh, wanted me to sort of poo-poo people's experiences. So I gave up in the end after a year of writing. And then I was told about this private university um, which was sponsored to do uh, postgraduate degrees and degrees by the U.S. state of Wyoming. And it was a unique department of consciousness studies and sacred traditions, which was just up my street with my religious studies background. Um, and what I did, I analyzed evidence of survival, quality of the accuracy of the mediumship, the spiritually transformative impact of the mediumship and the changed worldviews and impact on life. Uh, my supervisor was Dean Reverend Dr. Elizabeth Fensky. She was the IAN's president and editor of Vital Signs, their journal. Um, and Diane Corcoran, IAN's president of today, um, she researched and lectured there too. And the Dr. Lingia, a psychiatrist, he also researched there and other esteemed researchers. But sadly, it's now closed. Uh, my external examiners was Professor uh, Carl Lindgren, an educationalist and polymath and author and Dr. Carl, uh, Crawford Knox from Oxford. And meanwhile, I edited UK university MPhils and PhDs and university lecturers books, and that helped to pay my way. And I taught psychical research in the local Devon colleges and wrote the book, Moses and Jesus, the Shamans, and the foreword was by Professor Archie Roy. Um, so just a little bit more about the background to the friendships. When I went back up to Glasgow, Archie invited me to become a Scottish Society Psychical Research Council member, and Archie was the SSPR. And the SSPR editor of the SCI report, their journal, requested I write articles on my personal mediumistic and psychic experiences. Um, and these will be on my website, jackiejoneshunt.com. My old site's just gone down and the new site goes up in the next few days. Um, I taught day and evening psychical research in Glasgow at the University of Strathclyde and the University of Paisley, now known as the University of West of Scotland. And Archie said to me as he continued his psychical research classes too, um, that I would be more and more fluent with my subject because I was teaching it. So he was very supportive. I wrote two more books, which was Proof Animals Have Souls and 500 Plus Celebrities Go Vegetarian. And there are two in a series, and possibly I will write some more in that series. I was the book review editor for about a year, perhaps a bit longer, of the Academy for Spiritual and Consciousness Studies in the USA. And I had columns in their two journals, the Searchlight and the Journal for Spiritual and Consciousness Studies. And I attended the Arizona conference, but sadly had to decline an invitation to talk on the SEER Emmanuel Swedenberg, who's mentioned in my book in some depth uh, in Moses and Jesus, the Shamans, um, because I became a carer for my 91-year-old uh, mother-in-law um, for three and a half years. She lived with us until she was 94 and a half. Um, here's some pictures. Here's Victor and Wendy, Sonia and Aldi, and Karen Herrick, the president uh, at that time. So that was at the um, conference, which was a happy time. So there's probably a lot about Gordon on the internet, but my talk's a lighthearted, personal, introductory approach to a dear friend who became a spiritual father to me. Um, I did end up loving him very, very much. He was such a beautiful gentleman. <clears throat> So to introduce his brilliant evidential mediumship, his life events, his teachings and predictions, as he told me at the Arthur Finley College in his home, is an honor. He was an outstanding, outstanding and passionately dedicated man. He was charismatic, charming, mischievous, humorous, and highly intelligent, but very dedicated to his art. 
He predicted I'd write books and teach on the subject. Well, I have three at the moment and hopefully more to come. Moses and Jesus the Shamans gives information about mediumship and proof animals have souls and 500 plus celebrities go vegetarian. Again, is making the case we are all animals, so we all have souls. We all have eternal energy. So Gordon's lectures will be going on my website in the future, and obviously they'll be free for anybody who would like to listen to them. At Gordon's funeral, I was deeply touched to be gifted with a red rose from Gordon's coffin lid, which I preserve to this day. And recently, I do believe it was Gordon who told me to reopen my preserved lectures of his and put them on my website for people to hear. So it'll be Gordon doing Zoom meetings and Gordon doing lectures again. Now, I first saw Gordon demonstrate his mediumship in a huge Liverpool theatre when I returned home to Liverpool from Jordan, and that's Liverpool of the Beatles fame. Soon after, I moved to Glasgow for the postgraduate studies, but I'd initially touched down back from the Middle East, um, and I was fascinated to see Gordon and his amazingly accurate evidential mediumship. This was my first contact with him. He was contacted by the Fallen in the Falklands War, which was between April and June in 1982. Um, there'd really been no war news in Jordan. Gordon gave names of people and ships. Um, he gave uh, physical features of spirits, causes of death. And these were third party communication mediumistic evidence. And with that came emotionally healing messages. And my future husband, not met yet, uh, was a Royal Marine. In, he had a green berry and he fought in that war. Uh, possibly by coincidence. Um, Gordon's birth and mission was foretold by spirit. Um, at Longton Spiritualist Church in Staffordshire, which is near the West Midlands in England, the medium told Gordon's future mum, who was called Fanny Higginson, at only, only the age of 14, spirit predicted her future mediumistic son will have great work to do. And she she was also told that the Higginson name would link to Longton Spiritualist Church for 100 years. And the medium continued naming and saying her mother has just passed a spirit while she is here in the Spiritualist Church and is here to tell her this. So obviously crying, Gordon's future mother returned home, finding this evidence to be true. And she had two sons and a daughter, and then Gordon. So she had to wait to see which was the one that she felt was going to be the medium, because the others weren't mediums. So Gordon was called the boy Wonder. And at the age of three, he sat in a circle, first of all, leaning on a cushion by his mum, and later chair legs were cut short so the feet could touch the floor. At age 10, he was permitted to give messages. And at age 12, he was permitted to perform the first demonstration at Longton Spiritualist Church, Staffordshire. Gordon gave names, addresses, phone numbers, and the so-called deceased um, were proven to all and sundry that they were communicators. This was mediumship, not psychic abilities. Gordon was a trance, clairvoyance, a materialization medium. Gordon's mother, his strict teacher and best friend, she trained Gordon. She was an excellent evidential spiritualist medium herself, and she passed only in 1978. She trained her son's natural mediumship, and he probably became the best contemporary evidential, detailed, accurate spiritualist medium and he's certainly the UK's most famous medium. Now, Gordon demonstrated evidence of survival in countless churches, halls and theatres, including the Royal Albert Hall in London. Now, we've mentioned the Arthur Finlay College, so this is Arthur Finlay of Arthur Finlay College fame. He was a Glasgow stockbroker who became a prolific writer on spiritualism, and he left his Stansted UK vast mansion 
to become the Arthur Finley College for the development of and experimentation with mediumship and spiritual philosophy. And Gordon told me family pressures regarding Finley's will began to change Findlay's mind, and he passed before the will was changed. But cheekily, Gordon said he was glad he passed before the will was changed because he knew the work that the Arthur Findlay College was going to do. Uh, please excuse my picture on these photographs, but they're not copyright because they're my photographs. Um, so this is introducing the Arthur Findlay College. I looked through my pictures and um, here is a good picture of the Arthur Finley College, and you can get some sort of idea of the size of the place. Um, this is where Gordon lived, lectured, demonstrated most of the time. He lived with his sister Hazel in Staffordshire, but as I say, he spent most of his time here. He travelled up and down the country, but he spent most of his time here. Um, and my photos show my innumerable uh, every year weeks um, at the Arthur Finley College many times a year, every year, for years. Um, you can see another picture of the home there. And over to the right is a chapel that was built on uh, where they used to do Sunday services where uh, the local residents were also invited, people who weren't on the residential courses. And it was uh, quite phenomenal, uh, the evidence that was given out to people. Um, it's notable that Gordon also psychically read the emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical auras, which are a predominant thoughts and actions create. Um, Emmanuel Swedenberg and others would say, our spiritual or otherwise auric emanations determine with perfect karmic justice our after-death landscapes in a labyrinthine world, an idioplastic, malleable to thought, spirit realm in which like attracts like. Um, Gordon was the longest serving president of the Spiritualist Nationalist Union from 1970 to 93. He was the minister of um, the Spiritualist National Union as well. So he did weddings and funerals. He was the principal of the Arthur Finley College, and he was also the president of Longton Spiritualist Chair, uh, Church. Gordon told me he didn't want to be the president of the SNU, and yet he was for 23 years. But the story behind that is one night, very tired after midnight, traveling home from Portsmouth Temple, Gordon took a wrong turn, realizing he was en route to the Arthur Finley College. He phoned Mr. Sills, the manager of the Arthur Finley College, to stay the night. But the next morning, Mr. Sills told Gordon a monk was waiting for him in the library. But this was impossible, as no one knew Gordon was there and had taken that detour. The monk told Gordon he must become the president of the SNU and that spirit had guided Gordon there in the middle of the night. Standing in the gallery next to the open library door, Gordon told the uh, Arthur Finley College manager the command he'd just received. So the Arthur Finley College manager said to him, well, you must accept. So they both re-entered the library and there was no other way out. And they found the monk had literally disappeared. So Spirit had in mind that Gordon had work to do with the Spiritualist Nationalist Union, demonstrating evidence of survival. Um, the Arthur Finley College became my home from home. This is taking snaps with Gordon and my mum there on the stairs. Um, and this is the Great Hall. So you'll be seeing lots of pictures of the college inside and out. And there's Gordon there in the blue jumper. Uh, Gordon kindly suggested I photograph this week's team of mediums. But now I'm looking at it, I do think Gordon's precognition had kicked in because he knew I'd be looking for photographs from my current Zoom talk that aren't copyright. Uh, Mavis Patilla is on the right, and she later gave me a further reading in a Manchester home. And Betty Wakeling is on the left. She was a flower clair sentience lady. Um, she lived in Blackpool, and Martin Young is there at the back. Um, so all week, every week, mediums give readings and demonstrations throughout the Arthur Finley College weeks, um, which is phenomenal because you're talking to spirits all week. Um, this is Gordon in the library, and um, he smiled over at me 
uh, as he's daily lecturing in the library, uh, jovially telling me to take his photo. So I got my camera out and took it. And as I say, Gordon's precognition regarding my talk on his life, I think that's why he was saying this. He called me his regular student, and he was and is a sensitive, humorous, clever, quick-witted, mischievous gentleman, but very much a gentleman. He was and is passionately dedicated to proving life continues after physical death and the after-death consequences of this, you know, the different realms and landscapes that we go to. Um, I witnessed Gordon's physical phenomena. Gordon evidenced his communications with third-party communicators, and he won over skeptics. It was just phenomenal, the information that he would give. Um, even the TV series with Randy had Gordon there and some others, but they wouldn't play back the evidence that he had given. And this did deeply upset Gordon because they were out to try and uh, poo-poo the subject. And as I say, he was born a natural medium, but with patient, dedicated years of meditation, Gordon honed his gifts to become a trance medium, spirits talking through him. And later he became a physical phenomena medium, producing ectoplasm for spirits to manifest their etheric bodies as recognizable as their physical bodies. This was a wintry November evening when I went, and Gordon wore only a simple white dressing gown, which was verified by a male attendee. And I didn't see Gordon for nearly two days. He meditated and fasted in preparation for the demonstration. No one was allowed to record or photograph due to Gordon's previous burns around his navel. The slightest click from a camera or a recorder caused the ectoplasm to drop to the carpet and retract, burning him. And cheekily, he told me he'd told the hospital that he was rushed to. It was a hot water bottle burn. And I wonder if it was this photograph which caused that accident, because our group was told that from now on, nobody's to bring in uh, cameras or uh, recorders. Um, Gordon produced the materialization of a Zeebrugge ferry victim. Gordon's guides, a young girl, Cuckoo, who he knew from childhood and used to play with, and he called her Cuckoo, so the name stuck. Um, and Chu Chow and Paddy assisted and spoke. So this was direct voice trance phenomena. In stages, Gordon went deeper and deeper into trance an ectoplasm poured from Gordon's mouth. Our group was told we were all meant to witness these phenomena. A young man materialized, and he was a Zeebrugge disaster victim. He spoke to his mother in the audience, and we learned she was becoming ill with grief and must stop grieving, and there wasn't a dry eye. It was a very spiritual and uplifting experience. Her son's spirit son consoled her, saying he's with his fiance as they pass together. But emotion finally broke um, the connection because he broke down when he said he didn't understand why they had to go at this early point in their lives. But I'm sure it did help the mother and it was incredible proof for all of us who watched. Um, just to give you a little bit of information on that, um, I looked this up recently because I haven't done since that because it was enough to see the young man um, and I see how this poor man died. It was the MS Herald of Free Enterprise, a roll-on, roll-off British car ferry. 193 people were killed and it capsized only moments after leaving the Belgian port of Zeebrugge on its route to Dover in the UK. And unfortunately, a, a crewman named Stanley failed to close the bow doors, fell asleep, and both Sable and Lurie failed to check the bow doors. So it's human error. And Stanley, bleeding and cold, helped rescue survivors, but he was haunted, obviously, by his mistake. He went into hiding and he died at the age of 58. Um, and in the newspaper article, it said most people in UK Dover uh, knew somebody on that ferry. So it was a dreadful disaster, but I hadn't heard of it being off in Jordan for quite a few years beforehand. Um, I was friends with Gordon and Archie, 
Archie sent me his book, Archives of the Mind, and phoned and emailed during the years when I lectured in the West Midlands and Devon. And both Gordon and Archie were pleased I was spreading the psychical research with my courses and writing up my research for the MPhil and a PhD on the subject. And from the time I took Archie's psychical research night school class till almost his passing in 2012 with pneumonia, pneumonia we were decades long friends. And this is uh, his notes in uh, a book he sent to me. And he sent me this uh, of Ar archives of the mind. And he was very supportive of my uh, research, which I sent to him when I'd completed it. And he read it and sent it back um, uh, with a big tick. <laughs> Um, this is Gordon posing for my photo at the AFC library. Um, he was a humorous and very uh, compassionate, caring man. He talked of a wickerwork table um, moving on its own after his home seances. And his mother, as I mentioned, waited to see which of the sons was to be the medium that spirit had foretold. And I do believe that Gordon sat in seances for royalty. The Highland seer, Sween MacDonald, who was a friend of mine, who's another one who's passed, sadly, all of them have passed. Um, he was the seventh son of the seventh son. And when I was staying with him and his wife in his Ardguy Highland home, um, he told me that Prince Charles had come with his bodyguards and said he'd deny his visit if Sween um, ever said that he'd come to his Highland croft. Um, so I do believe the same was said to Gordon, that Prince Charles would deny it. Um, if Gordon never mentioned it. But with a wink and a nod, I do believe uh, Gordon uh, did do seances and readings for royalty. Gordon taught at the Arthur Finley College on the first summer school in 1965. And from then on, he taught there almost till his passing. Um, and he also taught, as I mentioned, across the UK, but he was predominantly at the Arthur Finley College. His guide, Light, this is another of his guides, he visited only once a year with predictions. And his other guide um, was Dr. John, who was Gordon's spiritual healing guide. Sadly, Gordon had some mini strokes in 1990, and he was quite perturbed because being a medium all of his life, his medium halted temporarily, but it did come back. Um, it was while he was healing. But when you're a medium all of your life and seeing spirit all of your life, for it suddenly to disappear, but it did reappear quite quickly afterwards. Um, Gordon told me he spent more hours in meditation than sleep. Now that's discipline. He taught me that his mother told him to describe the communicator's appearance, and this is how he used to demonstrate. He'd also name the communicator, perhaps his or her job, interest, street or area name, he described how the spirit communicator passed to spirit, and only after such evidence, he'd then give the spirit communicator's message because you knew who it was coming from. So Gordon's excellent evidence of survival converted each and every skeptic. And as an infant, he sat in circle on a cushion from the age of three. And as I said, the chair legs were cut short so his little feet could touch the floor. And he told me that as a, a young man, impatient and regularly leaving home from his mum, who was very strict but a brilliant teacher, um, he learned that patience uh, would win the day and give him excellence. Um, in World War II, Cuckoo saved him and his men. Fellow soldiers regularly asked Gordon, will you die today? Answering no. And knowing Gordon spoke to spirits, many men felt safer at Gordon's side. So in Italy, desperate to retreat from heavy German tanks and artillery, trapped by a collapsed bridge over a dangerously fast-flowing river, Gordon's commander asked him, will you die tonight? No, was the answer. So the commander asked Gordon and volunteers to attempt to retreat through the dangerously fast-flowing, flooding river. Uh, Gordon asked his lifelong and childhood spirit friend, Cuckoo, to save them. So this young female guide told Gordon to follow the bouncing ball. But it, this bouncing ball only Gordon could see. So he followed it across the flooding river. But the ball went bobbing across right and left, forwards and backwards. Um, they were all drenched in fearful faith, following across the perilous river. 
leading Gordon and the men away from death. And if it wasn't death, it would have been a prisoner of war camp. Now, Gordon often told me how he saw spirit people as clear as physical people. And sometimes he had to take a quick check to see which one it was. Um, another example, in World War II, Gordon told me of his new shoe shop job. When a man walked in, Gordon politely hurried over to assist with the man's shoe selection. It's not like that today. So realizing the man was a spirit, not in the physical body, the spirit told Gordon his colleague is hoping for good news as she knows he's missing in action. Turning around embarrassed, Gordon's co-worker thought he'd gone mad. And at first, Gordon said, I'm just practicing. It gives you a slight insight into Gordon's humor. But then Gordon told her of her brother's tragic news. And he later created shoes with hues as Gordon saw auras. And this became part of his business for generally the rest of his life. But it always took the back burner. Um, he was a medium uh, first and foremost. Gordon also told me in World War II, a man right next to him said, oh, Gordon, I thought I was a goner then. And he was, as Gordon saw this man's spirit move out of the physical body. And one day, shocked to hear his mother shrieking, Gordon dashed to help. And he saw Fanny, his mother, throw a bar of soap at a tall, almost naked black native in the kitchen. And then they both realized that this was simply a spirit visiting them. And that's just some examples of how he sometimes mistook um, a spirit for um, a physical person. Just another quick uh, photograph of the Arthur Finley College. It's a good shot because it shows you the archways on the right and the acres and acres of land. And it's also got a beautiful lake. Um, so many seasons, many visits. Um, and that was a November time. Um, I always felt I was going to a heavenly sanctuary, staying in a wonderful building with acres of land and lake, away from the material world, listening to interdimensional phone calls with spirit and spirit lectures to us. And our auras were always so much better on departure. So it just shows you we were all wrecked by the material world on arrival. And you can see behind me the chapel on the right, which I do think was built on later. Um, the centenary year with the Spiritualist National Union, 100 Years of Spiritualism, um, Gordon and Jean Bassett gifted me with a book um, to Jackie. It was a wonderful year. Best wishes, Gordon, president of the SNU. And to Jackie, have a good life and learn well. God bless Jean Barris Bassett. She was a medium, a spirit spiritualist minister. And she was, uh, I think, one of the few people, if, if not the only person who's ever had the SNU Fellowship Award. Um, this is another picture of the Arthur Finley College. Uh, Ronnie was another regular. And we gave each other spiritual healing and drew each other's auras. He was a kind, loving soul who loved to channel healing. And um, this one also shows Gordon's abilities. Um, this lady was impressed to be told by Gordon that she had a crown on her head. And she admitted none of us knew she was actually the queen of her tribe. Uh, Ronnie was a wonderful chap. Um, and sadly, when he passed, um, it was a great loss. And his family donated a bench to the Arthur Finley College commemorating and celebrating Ronnie's life. And you can see over at the back there, the arches to the right towards the chapel. Um, these are further pictures of the Arthur Finley College. Um, I feel like a tour guide. Gordon's invitations for discussions at Gordon's home. Um, he kindly asked me if I'd like to come and have discussions, which we did. Um, it shows you some beautiful rooms in the Arthur Finley College and the land outside. So arriving at Gordon's home the first time, Gordon spoke to his feathered bird, which was tweeting away like she was an excited dog or child. And the pictures of Glyn Edwards, he was trained by Gordon. He's in the white shirt with the black beard just behind myself and my husband. So arriving at Gordon's home, he lived with his sister, Hazel. 
Gordon psychically knew I'm vegetarian, offering me pre-made vegetarian sandwiches, which was a nice surprise. Gordon psychically knew I was near enough to drive to his house because previously I'd been living in Glasgow and it was an eight hour drive to the Arthur Finlay College. Um, so it would have been at least four hours to his house. But he psychically knew I was now nearer and able to drive to his house for discussions. I was now a lecturer in the West Midlands, which is next to Staffordshire. And Gordon predicted I'd write books and teach and was destined to observe his and other mediums demonstrations. But sadly, in 1993, Gordon passed prematurely. Um, Gordon's predictions at his and Hazel's home. Now, these bear in mind, he passed in 1993. So these are 30 years ago. So if you can cast your mind back to 30 years ago, um, he told me then Europe would band together as a block. He also told me Scotland would seek to and probably break away from the UK. So I'm watching to see if it's in my lifetime that Scotland might do that. He also said England would seek to keep its cultural identity. Well, it's um, done Brexit so far. And he also said oh, the Queen would have been 30 years younger then. She's about 94 now, so she would have been about 64 then. He said the Queen would remain on the throne to the bitter end, like Queen Victoria. He said Prince Charles would go on the throne, and he said his sons never will. So it'll be interesting to see if Charles is the last monarch of the UK. And he told me he sent predictions to the Queen and governments at intervals, including his predictions that a man with a birthmark on his head would serve Russia well, which is obviously Mikhail Gorbachev. Um, he sensed his time was short. He told me this, and he told me that when he was in his car and going here and there, or when he was walking around the Arthur Finley College, he'd be sending his thoughts out to God, spirits to angels, saying, I have plenty more work to do here. Don't take me yet. So he had a premonition, or he just knew that they were going to take him. So I'm sure he's got plenty of work to do there. And I'm sure he's smiling down on us now uh, with the same thoughts in his head because he never really had time off. He was lucky if he had 10 days off a year, he told me. Um, so these are the books that have come out so far. So he's right on that prediction too. Uh, Gordon taught spirits retain personality and emotions and evolve after death at their own pace. I've learned that from a lot of direct voice trans uh, mediumship recordings I've listened to as well. Gordon psychically read auras, the spiritual, emotional, mental, physical, and how each influences the other. If you're emotionally down, it will affect the physical, etc. And the colored auric hues, the brightness, the refinements, they're all created by predominant thought patterns and actions. So these are also signposts of a person's potentials that would most fulfill his or her spiritual path um, or life purpose. I have personal experience of seeing colored auric orbs of visiting spirits and spiritually transformative mediumistic and psychic experiences and spiritual evolution are what most interest me. Gordon taught me the delicacy of giving readings and there was often a lot of humor in it. You, you know, he used to say spirits don't become angels overnight. And he gave me, you know, examples. A man had an affair. Uh, his wife clocked his mileage whenever he drove out. And the wife had readings with Gordon. This was up in Staffordshire. And the remarrying husband came for a reading and his now deceased, angry and hurt spirit wife told Gordon, tell him I knew about his affair and I know he's given my best coat to his mistress, soon to be wife. Um, so he said it's very difficult sometimes that the spirit could be shouting and annoyed um, and giving awful uh, things. And he's got to then try and tame it and pass it on to the person who's come for the sitting. But there was a great deal of humor with Gordon. Um, one day giving lectures as usual in the Arthur Finley College Library, Gordon halted saying the spirit wife of a man in the audience gives her blessing to his imminent second marriage. And then he went straight to the man in the audience and said, you must be marrying again soon. Um, so Gordon said the spirit wife had passed tragically through suicide and tragically she'd hanged herself. And the widower felt guilty about moving on with his life. 
Um, the spirit wife told us she works with animals in the spirit realm who, loving life, were eager to live their lives, but their God-given treasured lives were often brutally and murderously taken from them. So the slaughtered, unloved animals had taught his spirit wife the precious value of life and the invaluable gift she had thrown away and the grief she had caused others. Another time, Gordon halted his lecture because spirits were knocking on the door of his brain and saying they wanted to be heard. Um, it's not us always contacting them. It's them often wanting to contact us. Um, he halted his lecture as a spirit had told him that a lady in the library had had a tragic loss, a miscarriage. He told her that all babies are destined by God for the earth plane of existence and would not be stopped by the mother's health or choices. That baby's soul would be born to a sister or the next generation if necessary until it was allowed to have its destination, its destined incarnation. So he told her that she was very close to her niece and she agreed. And then he said, do you know that niece is the soul of the baby you'd lost? Tragically. So at the week's end, we often gifted Gordon with a lovely new jumper because he loved to wear his different colored jumpers. And in fact, he turned down a thousand pound for a reading from one man because he didn't want to tarnish his readings by accepting such money. So he was a very spiritually orientated man as well. Um, another story Gordon told me um, is when his mother, his teacher, early on took him to demonstrate evidence of survival as part of a service. He was young, naive and critical of an old lady medium who was to go on the platform before him, saying she can't see, she can't even stand up from her seat. How can she demonstrate to the church congregation? And his mother told Gordon to be patient. And amazed, Gordon said, when spirit came to this medium, she became completely rejuvenated and fortified and energized. More than stand up, she was walking sprightly around the congregation, reeling off evidential message after evidential message. And when spirit left this medium, immediately her health failed and she had to be helped staggering back to the platform chair again. So she was back to how she came into the church. Um, and so for those brief uh, time of the service, um, she was uh, full of life and vigor. And that was energy from spirit. Um, spirit um, and the solar plexus, Gordon mentioned uh, this. He told me of a time when stones were being thrown at the windows while he was demonstrating mediumship. So naturally he stopped. And his mother told Gordon, stand your ground. So he continued, he said a bit nervously, but he continued despite the noise and the threat from outside. And he said, never be concerned when you're nervous and your solar plexus is jumpy. That is evidence that spirit are drawing close to help. And he always recommended to have some green around the home and to always sleep on a problem so spirit can guide us during the night. Gordon told me one example of a trade unionist in spirit. Well, he told me many examples, but I'm just giving you this one because it's quite a startling one. Uh, telling his relative to sell the house to gain the money to fight a legal battle with an employer. So the man had done this and they'd lost. So the point of this is what I'm saying here is you should note that spirits will tell you what they would have told you in life. So judge carefully the spirit's advice. If you didn't take the trade unionist uncle's advice in life, don't take it because he's now got wings um, because he's going to give you the same. It takes people time to spiritually evolve in the next dimension or the next realm. Um, and sometimes they don't uh, uh, evolve that quickly. Um, this is again the Arthur Finley College. Um, Eamon Downey on the right and Betty Wakeling on the left. Betty Wakeling, you would go and get a flower, you'd put it in your hands, you'd put your thoughts and feelings into it, and you'd put the flower on her table. She wouldn't know whose flower it was. She'd come in and pick up the flowers. And between the petals, the dew, the stems, the berries, um, the information that she would give was astounding. Um, and Eamon Downey, um, he was a jockey. And coming away from the races, 
he started to hear voices and he thought he was going mad and he might have had one or two hits on the head. Um, and his sister took him to a spiritualist church. And from then on, he realized he's a medium. So he travels the UK and America now. But he did work a great deal with Gordon as well, as did Betty from Blackpool. Um, this is Mary Duffy on the left in the black and white uh, jumper. This is the library where we always spent the time with Gordon um, at the Arthur Finley College. Mary was, as I say, from Edinburgh. Um, and the two of them regularly worked with um, Gordon. And she stayed at my home in the West Midlands for a period of time as well. And I could tell you lots of accounts regarding Mary and her experiences. And Betty, one day reading my aura, she told me I was a vegetarian, which really surprised me. Because at that point in my life, I didn't realize that vegetarianism would show in the aura. Um, and she also told me, interestingly, that I had a weakness in my throat which I wasn't aware of at the time. But some years later, I lost the ability to sleep for about three years, horrible years. At about six stone, the doctors thought it was a brain tumor. Um, finally, they realized uh, through an autoimmune issue, I had completely destroyed my thyroid. So I was running on adrenaline, not metabolism. So no wonder I couldn't sleep. But... Um, when I was alone all at night and not unable to sleep, I got so emotionally and physically low, I was exhausted, and yet I was so um, sort of spruced up with energy. And I used to pray, I can't live if I can't sleep. So when I look back on this, I look at it as a shamanic type of experience, or like the tarot, tarot tower card, um, where something falls down in your life or something is shattered in your life, but you rebuild better and for it. And why I say a shamanic experience is the shamans used to um, use uh, deprivation regarding sleep deprivation or food or water deprivation or temperature deprivation to take themselves to um, skeletal proportions emotionally, mentally, physically, uh, so that they could rebuild back up. Um, so I look on it now as my shamanic experience, but it was a misery at the time. Um, this is Mavis, who worked with Gordon a lot, and he wanted her to be like a mother of the Arthur Finley College after his passing. But Mavis took her a different route, um, and she does great and fine work doing mediumship around the country and travels abroad. She actually invited me to her home in Manchester, where she gave me a reading. Um, I'd had many readings with all the mediums through the weeks at the Arthur Finley College, but this was at her home in Manchester. And it's interesting because she predicted my husband calling him, spirit called him a healer. Um, and that was interesting because accurately, he, a doctor, arrived at the end of that year as spirit had foretold. And I always remember her saying that spirits say it's not moon, June and roses, but endless conversations. And that's how it has been. Endless conversations. So I don't think all doctors are healers but I do believe my husband is. And it was interesting that spirit defined him that way. Um, this is the red rose from Gordon's coffin and the hymns at his funeral. And it's cherished. Gordon taught us life continues after death and Emmanuel Swedenberg taught us about varying after death landscapes, like attracting like. Gordon taught the world we human and non-human animals have souls which survive death. And Gordon loved doing funerals. Why? Because Gordon watched the deceased watch him officiate at his or her funeral, often on the front row, often sitting with their relatives, but eagerly watching him. He'd be smiling at them, they'd be smiling at him. And he loved doing funerals because every time it proved uh, so clearly that we do not pass, uh, we do, we go on and we, we pass on to spirit realm. Gordon watched the deceased walk around, checking who attended and who was genuinely upset. Again, he often had humor in it. And my soul adventure with spiritualism, my spiritual path began around 1980 and will continue for the rest of my incarnation and I believe incarnations. Uh, this is Glyn Edwards at the Arthur Finley College posing for my photo. There he is on the left with the beard and the white shirt. After Gordon passed to spirit, 
I saw Glynn regularly overshadowed by Gordon when he demonstrated. It was just like watching Gordon, and I can see it to this day. It was Gordon. Uh, sadly, Glynn passed to spirit following Gordon, so no doubt the two of them worked together. Uh, coincidentally, Glynn was from Southport near my Aintree Liverpool home. Um, I hadn't met him there, but I'd met him at the Arthur Finley College and we got to know him very well. Um, so he went at a young age, but I'm sure he's continuing to work with Gordon and trained by Gordon. I think the two of them will work well together. Um, and to finish, um, Professor Archie Roy, he was a prolific writer. Fact and fiction books. He used to bring his fiction books along to the uh, night school class that he taught uh, and sell them to us all. Um, and he wrote so many academic papers. And fit and well in the Glasgow University Boyd or Building Lecture Theatre. It was then used for the large numbers Archie attracted to his SSPR lectures. Archie announced he was in the process of writing his next book to be co-authored with Tricia Robertson. Uh, this co-authorship was not to be. So Archie will be remembered for a sense of something strange, archives of the mind and the eager dead. And he talked of spirits contacting for unfinished business, not necessarily us contacting them, but them tapping us on the shoulder to, to uh, finalize unfinished business. So it's sad that he didn't uh, uh, see his book um, out. He passed away a considerable time later with pneumonia uh, in December 2012. Now, I want to add that Clive Siegner, uh, very kindly and interestingly, has been talking with Gordon and Archie. Um, and he says that he, here tonight, he would play one or two of their answers. He asked them, will they attend the Zoom talk tonight? And from what he has uh, sent to me, it looks clearly to me that uh, they are. So these two men making history, Gordon Mons Higginson and Professor Archie Edmonston Roy, um, I was lucky enough to know them for many years um, and what an honor to be able to speak about them tonight. And so if people are interested, I'm sure uh, Clive would be willing to play uh, their voices saying that they're here with us all tonight. Okay. First, thanks, for, thanks everybody for coming. And of course, Jackie, my dear friend, wonderful, wonderful presentation. I am an IPC researcher, and I was fortunate a few weeks ago to be able to talk to both Gordon and, and Archie. I have just a few recordings because I know the time's been long, so I'll just play a, a couple of these for you. The um, I do repeat the answers a few times occasionally because I think it's a little, it's a little more, it helps with the clarity of understanding. And... Uh, the first recording is from Gordon Higginson, and he answers, he said he must be there, basically, right now. So just hold a sec, I'll see if I can get this to work. Will you be with her when she does her talk? Could you hear that recording? Okay, good. So that's fine. And then... I asked him at the, towards the end of the session this question, and he says, that's much better. Yes. Will you talk to Jackie when she tries to communicate with you via instrumental trans communication? Hmm. So those are the two from him. And then I've got a couple from Archie Roy, and uh, I asked him uh, this. I asked him this question, and he says, "Of course, of course, I will." Mr. Archie Roy, do you be with her when Jackie Jones comes to her talk about the lives of Gordon Higginson and you? Okay, and the last one, he answers, to this question, he answers, of course. 
If Jackie is able to contact you through instrumental trans communication, will you speak to her?